The first question comes from Isaiah 23, verses 2, 3, and 7. In a Bible study question that was given, it was asked, what and where were the merchants of Sidon that, uh, where did they send their ships? And where were the Sidon and Tyr colonies set up? Where, you know, where did they go to colonize? Well, let's look at verse 2 and 3 for the what, and then its wares. It says, you merchants of Sidon, your messengers <coughs> crossed the seas and were on many waters. We're on many waters. Does the desert have many waters on it? No. So we know they didn't set up shop across the deserts. They weren't tr land route traders. Okay? Everything they did would be next to water. You merchants of Sidon, well, Sidon was noted as junk or defective merchandise distributors your Target store. <laughs> yeah. Same idea behind it. They have... Um, what should we call these things? A conning system, they had a, a, this a way of creating a, a needs for people to have to go and get something. You know, they made something that wasn't sellable, sellable, that everybody had to have it if they wanted to stay young, we'll say. Or if they wanted to get a message to the gods, they had to go through their system to get there. Okay, that's interesting to take into account. But that's what Sidon was mostly known, noted for. We get our department stores today because of the merchants of Sidon. Uh, it says, you messengers, well, that's just sales reps or, sale, uh, shall we say, branch stores all over the place, crossed the seas. This is when they say cross the seas, it literally means they sailed around the world and established many trading posts on every continent. Did they hit America? Yes, yeah. they did. South America? Yes. New Zealand? Australia? India? China? Yes, they did. Okay. And they had a lot to do with Nigeria in Africa. How many were aware that Nigeria had an education system, had an um, arts and science center that made Europe not medieval in, you know, when, in the 17th century? They were so far advanced at the start of the 17th century in Nigeria that you couldn't even place Europe into the Stone Age in equivalency. Their music was second to none around the world. Their art was second to none around the world. A piece of the ancient Nigerian art, 
a carving. The lowest priced one that's been sold here in the last 20 years was over $20 million. Nigeria had a governmental system and had all these things, the medical system, that Europeans were going down there to get operated on until the Pope got involved. <coughs> and the Pope ordered them that society destroyed because they not only knew the world was round, but their science was already <laughs> using a computer system wow. to figure out everything. Map stuff and sure. books. Sure. And in their ancient history books of, of the world and events, they not only quote about Atlantis, but they knew all about Lemuria, the Lamu, the continent of Lamu. They had North America mapped out. And the Pope ordered everything destroyed. And he told the people in the southern states to buy them as slaves and break them as a nation. Okay? I do believe that the Pope at that time was a Lemurian. I believe the one that we have right now is Lemurian. Okay. I, I thought that the Marians were, were demons. Or are they just demon possessed? They have bodies and they can phase and change shapes and stuff like that. They are definitely evil. Not for good. Well, a lot of stuff was done. They were, the land was raped of any of its valuables in the, in the catacombs in Rome, hidden in the world. Some of it got into the hands of the Masons. And that's where the program got for the One World Order. Got finalized through. They had the program, a map out of how to do it. <coughs> they seen how Nigeria had contacts and a assets all around the world. Sons of Ham. But they were blessed. Because they had a moral law that was way better than anything that was available in Europe. And the jealousy and the awe that it inspired in Europeans that went into their cities was something else again. Everything was destroyed. And they, they were left without a nation. They were beaten up. They were used, they were sold to the Americans and South Americans as slaves. And they were broken. Their families were broken. If you destroy the family, you can destroy a nation and turn it into a slave. Well, that's part of the procedure that was used by Sidon. It's not a God-given procedure. It was part of what was used. There. And these sales reps, well, <coughs> let's say that they were very ruthless in their translation. Uh, their transactions were all done for the maximum get. Uh, you know, they would buy Manhattan for $24 worth of beads. Okay. Buy Manhattan Island. You'd sell it to them right now? 
Anyway, it was because they had these trading posts all over the place, they had great influence. The people that were involved here, they established um, a trade system and trade routes and mapped the ocean currents as to how to travel safely across the oceans. So you did get hit in these areas where the winds don't blow. Mm -hmm. okay. When it says, uh, and we're on many waters, um, it means they were even moving up rivers and onto lakes to establish trading posts, <coughs> their stores, or their department stores. Uh, they established colonies that addicted many people, not only to their goods and services, but to products that were not good for them. And amazing thing about them is they brought in diseases everywhere they went. If you needed to break the will of the people, you bring in the disease to kill off the opposition. Kind of like GMO now. Mm -hmm. Now, in verse 7, it says... Is this your jubilant city whose origin is from antiquity? Well, Isaiah wrote how long ago? Nearly 3,000 years ago. And it was antiquity at that time. When was it established? When Atlantis and Lemuria were around. It could have been up to like 52,000 years ago. It could have been. And it says, Who feet, whose feet used to carry her to colonize distant places. So they not only used the ships, but they also used to get inland if they knew there was a major city in there. Now, Sidon Tyre is reportedly the origin for the uh, great civilizations that were established by, by their colonizations in many countries. Um, Nigeria, as I said, had such a colony that flourished for over 2,000 years. Peace reigned in that area mm -hmm. for 2,000 years during the reign of these. I tell it was destroyed. Its culture and education system were so advanced that the invading hordes of British were like imbeciles or Neanderthals. In comparison, they just... They were the barbarians. They were total barbarians in comparison. No artist of Europe nor university could compare to what came out of that area. Well, we know that Sidon and Tyre, through these merchants, they had a program of colonization and control. We know that at the fall of the Chaldee Empire, the first Chaldee Empire, that 
many of those that were in that empire fled around the world to these other trading areas, these other department stores. And that's going back to the time of Noah. But the city of Chaldee, where the, uh, in the Chaldean region, where the Babylon was, a, the Tower of Babylon was built, was already old in antiquity before Babylon was built. Do you understand that? At the time of Noah, it was tens of thousands of years old. The seed of Satan. <coughs> the city in Chaldee was the city? Yes, the, the city in Chaldee was tens of thousands of years old. Of years old. Well, in Wisconsin, USA. Everybody know where that is? It's near Michigan. If you have a night. Lake Michigan. Well, there's evidence of the residents of Sidon lived in Wisconsin. And uh, their descendants established Ashland. As though were sons of Asher, but they weren't. Okay. And controlled an empire of trade and corn farming that ran all through the United States and down into Mexico. They fled south, and Sidon's descendants became known as the Aztecs. After a lengthy stay in Utah and Arizona before they moved. Now, there are things that every nation leaves behind trackers, uh, marks, uh, signposts of where they've been. Corn is a genetically engineered grain or cereal. Okay? It wasn't naturally made. It wasn't made for man. It's not made for the beasts, really. It, it, pigs are the only things that can digest it. Okay? If you feed it to cattle, they get all this... Um, Histamines build up and they can't move and they're sick and they they can just stand there and eat and produce milk. They can't they can't uh, you know they get fat they just they can't move. Well, and corn it cuts the life of a cow down from where it could live about 24 years, it cuts it down to about three and a half, four years. And they die. If they've been fed anything with corn in it, they'll die. Is this regular corn? This is not GMO? Is this this is just any corn. Oh, okay. Sidon, or the Chaldee, had developed corn. In America, it became known as maize because it had a different twist to it. But you see, it drains the soil. And the soil is only good for about 50 years, and there's no way it can continue to uh, produce after that. It turns land into deserts or into non-productive areas. Well, we can see where they had big farms and Wisconsin. They had a big city there. They moved uh, south. Some They split up and moved south. Some along the Mississippi where they built pyramids. And 
Others where they went into Arizona, Utah, but wherever they went, they burnt the land out farming corn. It's their trademark of how corn got used all around the world and killed the land. It was a satanic design. And in the history of things, it was given by the Atlantans to the, for the humans to kill themselves off with. But these trackers or these signposts that were from Sidon or the Chaldee, the first one was they always had blood sacrifices to Moloch. They would cut out the heart to be a messenger to God, to the gods. Okay? Blood loss was supposed to be very important to them. Well, they're the ones that used to, uh, they, Moloch's birthday was December 25th, and uh, they used to celebrate uh, by burning a child alive on December 25th, and that became Christmas, the, the, the massacre of a child, or many children. Yeah. It's a, a very pleasant affair. Everybody should celebrate Christmas. Wrong. No. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Anyway, the second point is they worshipped a feathered, winged serpent. Hmm. Now, isn't that interesting? And they spread the worship of this serpent into China, where they worshipped the feathered dragon. India, the dra two-headed dragon and the feathered dragon. Feathered snake. It's found all through Africa. It's found in Europe. It's found all through the states in South America. Hmm. Worshipping a feathered serpent. The Aborigines also worshipped oh, Australia, a feathered serpent. Different name, but Interesting. Um, I said the growing of corn was a, a sign. And their calendar and astronomy and mathematical skills were out of this world. They had ways of doing calculations that just left everybody in the dust. They're the first ones that had the zero placements. And <clears throat> where a symbol could represent a number of billions, cosines and uh, you know, the little signs to represent that something's to the 10th power or 20th power. Well, they had all that. Okay. And they had their merchandise trade practices. They ran trade routes and they ran department stores. And Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Hudson's Bay before it became Hudson's Bay. <laughs> Probably. So we see these five things that came out of Chaldee that went through Sidon, went through Tyre, and spread around the world. You could <laughs> see where the trademarks were. <coughs> and we have to remember every race that moves through an area leaves its trademark, its signpost that has been there. The tribe of Dan left, they named rivers Danube, Dan Denmark, Denmark, all these other things on their travels uh, when they left captivity. But part of the tribe of Dan first uh, established in Ireland. Okay. So everyone leaves their mark. Um, there's a lot of information that Solomon visited Denmark. He involved, got involved in Ireland. 
because he was able to um, have this ring of power that allowed him to not only translate, but um, he sounded like thunder when he appeared and, and, and left. They called him Odin. And he had a hot-headed son that they called Thor. <laughs> so. So that was his. That was his ungodly name. That when he went yes, to that, that side and went into witchcraft and all that stuff, that was yeah. his name. The Jerbol, the highest. I believe so. Anyway, we gotta realize that every nation leaves footprints where it goes. People from China have come over and settled here in Canada, and what do they set up? Little China, China towns with their yeah. dragons yeah. and their yeah. gold plated yeah. stuff. Yeah. All this cheap gold plated items, yes. Yeah. Beef and broccoli dishes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let's look at verse 13 because it adds to it. Behold, the land of the Chaldeans, this is the people which was not. Oh. Listen to that again. Behold the land of the Chaldeans. This is the people that was not. Was not what? God's people? No, people. No. Not God's people. No. The promised people, though. It's now of no account. They were not of the world. No. They were not part of God's original creations of the earth. You realize that? Get the picture. That means they, their origin is from some place else, not Earth. There is some of the writings that were found from the Sumerians that refer to the land of Chaldee as possessing the remnant of Atlantis. But Atlantis didn't come, the residents there weren't from the earth. Isn't that kind of strange? If we're, what we're seeing is statements in the Bible confirming things that we have from the secular world that you didn't study when you went to school. <laughs> yeah, try to they keep that all hidden from you. Oh, yes. Yeah. And then it goes, Assyria appointed it for desert creatures. Now let's talk about the city of Babylon, the Chaldean land, the land of the Chaldeans, that Assyria, which later became Germany, appointed the land of the Chaldee, the land that contained these aliens, <coughs> the people that, which was not of the earth. <coughs> It appointed them to be destroyed. It wanted to totally destroy the influence of the Chaldees. And it says, they erected their siege towers, they stripped its palaces, and they made it a ruin where nobody lives today. They said, well, the problems about Babylon would be a ruin. Mm -hmm. 
but they control the Stargate. Mm -hmm. And we'll, at some later time, I'll show you where that's in the Bible. Well, the Chaldeans established great stone structures, palaces, fountains, great wells, and walls that defied imagination. The Chaldeans created a kingships around the world because they considered themselves gods. And wherever they sent out their merchants, when the merchants did successful, they made them a king in that land to be worshipped. They made priests. And the priests were to keep the people loyal to the king. For government and for collection of taxes and collecting the gold to be shipped back to Kaldi. Is that not mimicking what we're supposed to be, kings and priests on the land? Mm -hmm. They had adjutants. <laughs> An adjutant is a An enforcer. Agitates the people. <laughs> no, it subdues the people. It goes in if you're if you're causing a problem for the king or the priest, they just eliminate you. That's the job of the adjutant. Okay, sees that the will of the king and the priests get carried out. And it existed in every land that they colonized. The religion was to the worship of Moloch, the Baal, <laughs> and then they turned around and they would put these kings and priests and adjutants, and in some areas before they got built up, there were, before they established them, there was governors that would prepare for the king. The coming of the king. <coughs> These uh, set up, uh, governmental setups established loyalty to Babylon and were seeing the same thing that what the Catholic Church has done through all these countries that it can get into. It's following the procedure of the Chaldees, the Babylon. Right to the letter. No change is necessary. However, there was a neutrality in there because the Lemurians and the Atlantans didn't agree with one another. They weren't friendly to each other. They were in competition. Satan loves competition. So Atlantis moved to sink the continent of Lamu, where the Lemurians were. The Lemurians realized they were doomed and used the same crystalline technology to sink most of Atlantis. They couldn't get it all sunk, but they shifted it into the, where it couldn't be used anymore. They shifted it to the South Pole and became our southern continent. Antarctica. Antarctica. Are we saying, Joe, that uh, Solomon, because of his prestige, because they called Baal the God of Thunder as well, was he transformed into a Baal to worship? What does the word Lord mean? Baal. Baal. Yes. And what was Baal famous for? Lording it over the people. Sexual prowess. Yes. And how many wives and concubines did Solomon have? Uh, uh, 700 plus 300, yeah. Uh, Would you say he was showing off his prowess? Yes, yes. Is there any doubt, maybe, it's, that there could be a connection? 
Uh-huh. Yeah. And he had a period of where he, he lost God, too. So. Uh -huh. Well, as I said, the governors were set up in these areas to enforce the laws and to get the people trained into following the law of the priests and the kings. It created the slave mentality. Same as what we have in the States and Canada right now. Slave mentality. But first, they would establish the department stores. It's amazing how you can control people when you can create artificial needs for them. Mm -hmm. Department store needs. And this, once they were established, it was easy for the trade and the taxation to follow. You supply us your goods at a penny per pound, and we supply you our products from another area at 20 cents a pound, and we make a fair trade. But they would always build pyramid-style temples also. Temples were always built wherever they colonized. In verse 15, Now it will come about in that day that Tyre will be forgotten for 70 years, like the days of one king. At the end of 70 years, it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the harlot. Now, this verse tells us that as in ancient times, the Chaldean harlot will be silenced for 70 years. But it will also take place at the uh, ninth resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire, the resurrection of the Chalde system that Rome represents. Rome was one of the areas in which were colonized, a major center was colonization of Chalde. And it's interesting that the Pope was silenced in 1938 by Hitler. And in 2008, the Roman Catholic Church had a 70-year hiatus of um, diminishment, and they were forgotten as a political entity. But in 2008, something happened, and all of a sudden, the Catholic Church has starts wielding great power. Mm -hmm. Wealth is coming into it. And it says, however, the next seven years it would sing its song and be remembered. And that's what it's doing right now. It's singing its song and is being remembered. The harlot is singing. And it's calling back its daughters. Yes, singing to them sweet songs. Singing the sweet song of deception. And the Protestants are falling for it, hook, line, and singer. Then the Roman Catholic Church would push its agenda of one world government, one world religion. This uniting Europe, that's, you know, forming this united Europe against all non-submissive sons of Israel. All the sons of Israel that will not submit to the Pope. It will unite Europe to move against. in verse 17. And it will come about at the end of 70 years that the Eternal will visit Tyre. Then she will go back 
to her harlot wages have world domination like the ancient Chaldee world dominion and she will play the harlot with all the kingdoms and the united religion on the face of the earth prophesied revelation yeah. it's followed right here in Isaiah 23 verse 17 This verse reaffirms a great change of power is afoot for the Roman Catholic Church. And we see the way Pope Francis is moving. It's not good. Not good at all. He seems to be able to broadcast thoughts into people's minds so that they have no will of their own to oppose them. The great Babylon harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, shall ride the beast again. It's preparing the United States of Europe, the Holy Roman Empire, to rise again. It's collecting great riches for that empire. And is becoming merchants of error and deception, the same as ancient Babylon. Revelation 17, verse 3 says, Merchants of the earth have become rich by the wealth of her sensuality. Mm -hmm. The ships of Tarshish shall become prosperous again. They will use the same principle of trade, government, and religion as the Atlantans used in ancient Babylon, as the masters of the ancient Chaldee. In summary, the remnant survivors of Atlantis settled with humankind in the Chaldee area. They spread to Tarshish, to Tyre, to Sidon. You know, they started the spreading out, building their converts. From the fall of Tyre, they spread mostly to Wisconsin, the bulk of the ones that were in the Chaldee, not the ones that were in the subsidy, or the spread out, move to Wisconsin in the U.S. because it had the biggest empire away from their enemies where they could regroup. And became known as the um, Esther... Uh, as no, uh, Tessians. As to scenes. And when they moved south, they built pyramids and became known as the Aztecs. After they took over the Olmecs. Now the Olmecs were originally under the control of Lemire, the Lemurians. So this ends part one.